Hey everyone, my name is Jimmy Smith and I'm on staff here at FBC Allen and I want to personally thank you for being here on Easter Sunday with us. Thanks for stopping by. Whether you're watching this on Sunday or sometime during the week, we're just glad you're here and we know that God has a reason for you to be here with us and He wants to meet with you. Thank you for being here. If you're a guest, a first time guest, please let us know that you're here. Fill out the online guest registration form or just drop a comment uh, in the comment section. Let us know your name, where you're watching from. We want to say hello to you and we want to know how we can best uh, minister to you. If you happen to be in the area, we would love for you to come uh, and visit with us here in person. But if not, we're just so thankful that you chose to join online with us. Today is a big Sunday. It is Easter Sunday in Matthew chapter 28. Here's what the scripture says. It says, the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Verse six, he is not here. He has risen just like he said. And that's what we're celebrating today. We're celebrating the risen savior. Do me a favor if you can, while you're watching this, just kind of Try to clear out all the distractions, focus on what's going on, sing when we sing, open up your scriptures when we read the Bible. We're going to share the gospel message. And again, as I said earlier, God has a word for you. Thanks for being here. Now let's worship together on this Easter Sunday. Took my place, laid inside. 
inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no My name is Chad Self, Senior Pastor here at First Baptist Church Allen. On behalf of our congregation, Happy Easter to you. Easter blessings. We are celebrating the risen Christ today, and I'm so glad you've joined us. If you're a member, whether you're here in town or traveling, seeing family over the long weekend, thanks for joining us. If you're a guest, if you've been jumping on with us on our online service for a while, wherever you are in the world, Thanks for being here today. We are focusing on the risen Christ today. Now, if you've been with us the last few weeks, you also know we've been talking a lot about walls in the Bible. And that image uh, carries so many different uh, meanings and purposes. And we've really enjoyed this series. Well, we're talking about walls today and maybe some unique walls. Now, can you guess? What's the most famous wall that's ever been built probably in, in all of human history? And most people, I think, they're going to say, well, that'd be the Great Wall of China. So we have a picture here for you. Think about this. 4,000 miles long. It took a 1,000 years to build. Now, if you're at your house and you have some smart, smart people in the room with you, why don't you ask them, what country, they're history buffs, what country was the Great Wall of China built in? Let's see how they do. Okay, now the thing about the Great Wall of China is it didn't really protect the country that well. It was so long, it was difficult to defend. There was so much territory, enemies would just wait until the guards weren't in some section. They'd hoist ladders up, crawl over, or they'd bribe the guards and they'd just open the gates to people. So it didn't, didn't really work that well as a deterrent. Now another famous wall, we have another picture for you, the Berlin Wall. Now, if you grew up in my generation, you heard a lot about the Berlin Wall, separated East and West Berlin, a symbol of the Cold War, and uh, also the site for President Ronald Reagan's, maybe one of his most well-known famous quotes, Mr. Gorbachev, who was leading the Soviet Union at the time, tear down this wall. And as a result of that wall coming down, it was a symbol of communism's power, and that power was broken. And, and truthfully, a lot of the events going on in our world right now can be traced back 
to the Berlin Wall because uh, Vladimir Putin is, was very offended that his country had given up so much. The Soviet Union disintegrated. And that's part of the reason why we're having a conflict today. History still speaks. Okay, so those are some famous walls. But on this Easter Sunday, this Easter weekend, I want to talk to you about walls that maybe aren't quite so famous, but they are, they're real to you. Uh, we use the expression sometimes that, man, life is so hard, just hit the wall. You're going through life and everything seems to be smooth sailing and something unexpected happens. We run into a wall. Sometimes, sometimes we, we hit those walls hard. I want to give you some examples. Workplace walls. Now, in my conversations with people, I know a lot of folks talking about pressures at work. Like, the world has just been nuts for the last few years, and yet a lot of workplace leadership seems to think, well, that shouldn't affect your job. But we know it does. And so they say, well, you just need to work harder. You need to do more hours. You need to make up the difference. You need to catch up from where you've been. And kind of oblivious to the world around. And they also say, if you don't like it, we'll just find someone else to take your place. And so for a lot of people, we're tired. Maybe you want to quit. But you say, well, I'm too young to retire, and I still have that crazy thing called a mortgage and a car payment and my kid's college fund all crying out for more, and you're just stuck. So you're in a pressure situation, you're stuck, and you just hit a wall. Of course, then uh, over the last few months, we have this runaway inflation. I read this week, uh, it's been 40 years since inflation has has gone off the charts like it is right now. And, the economy is in trouble, especially in certain sectors, and some of you feel that where you work. And so you're hitting the wall because a lot of different reasons. Maybe the economy all shifted and uh, you, you lost your job, and you can't find a new one, certainly not one that replaces the old one. Or uh, what you have, because everything's more expensive now, it's not providing enough, and so maybe you're working multiple jobs. You've added on extra work hours. Now, this is a serious wall, and thing is, you're tired, and you're running out of money. You don't have any margin. Anything goes a little bit wrong, car troubles or uh, an illness, and man, what are you going to do? Here's what I want to tell you about workplace walls. The story of the risen Christ has a word for you, and before we're done today, I think you're going to feel it. Now, let's talk about relationship walls. Some of us get past that vocational wall, that workplace wall. We're just cruising along through life and think, I think I'm in the clear. And then you run into another wall, that relational wall. And I tell you, when you hit walls in relationships, it's some of the greatest hurt that you can encounter. And it cuts the deepest in your soul when it comes to things like marriage and family and your close friendships. Okay, so example, sometimes it's just... You wish you could be married and have a family. Now, I've talked to several of our young adults in recent months just trying to trying to date, and they're just disillusioned by the process, and, and they're at this wall, and it's frustrating. I could introduce you, too, to a lot of married people who thought, if I could just get married, it would solve all my problems. They said, hey, you know, I've done the dating app thing. I've done all these extreme measures to try to find that somebody... They're married, but uh, they gave up the dating app, but maybe they'd like to put their spouse on eBay just to auction them off. This, this marriage is, is not what I thought it was going to be. It's, it's not like on movies. It's, it's a, causing a lot of pain in my life. And, you know, some of the walls that you hit hardest, uh, some of the deepest pain you'll ever know or when marriage isn't, isn't what, isn't working within God's plan or, It's just not what you thought it was going to be. And some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Then we continue on with those relationship things, that parent-child kind of pain. And man, that goes deep. uh, By the way, for those of you who are parents, you sign on for life. And there are all these different stages of parenting. And sometimes some of those stages are more brutal than others. Uh, You know, we have a lot of examples. So, Let's start here. There's the young couple, dreams of a family, 
and that dream just not coming true, and, and there's a wall. And some of you know those kinds of family, marriage, relational walls, and you just say, what is up with this? I thought I had this, this thing figured out. And again, I want to tell you, before this, before this service ends today, I think the risen Christ is going to have a good word for you. Then, let's talk about unexpected crisis. Now think about this. Believe it or not, some people, and I know some of these people, they made it most of the way through life. In their life, workplace wall, no problem. Financial troubles, never. No marriage or family issues of real significance didn't slow them down much. And they think, I am going to be able to make a clean run all the way to the end of this race. And then... There's just this calamity out of nowhere. You know, a normal doctor's visit, and then boom, something's not normal. Or you, uh, some of you have had this experience. You get that phone call in the middle of the night. And what do you do when you're, when you're slammed up against a wall of just overwhelming grief and, and disappointment, pain? Uh, sometimes we say you bump into a wall. Sometimes you just get plastered against that wall. And you wonder where you're going to turn, and you wonder what you're going to do uh, when, when the wall is a wall of loss and grief and disappointment. And again, what I want to tell you is the risen Christ will speak to you. Before we take on the last wall, I want to read. There are a lot of different places we could read about Easter, but I, I love the summary years after the fact that the Apostle Paul gives as he enters into a whole chapter talking about the risen Christ, the resurrected Savior. And this from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 15, 1. And here's what the Apostle Paul says. Now I want to make clear to you, brothers and sisters, the gospel I preached to you, which you received, on which you have taken your stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold to the message I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, 1 Corinthians 15, For I passed on to you as of most important what I have also received. Listen carefully. Here's, this is the most important, he says, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's a simple, simple story of everything that took place at Easter. Christ died for our sins on the cross. He was placed in a tomb. And on the third day, he was raised from the dead. And that resurrection speaks to everything in life and everything for eternity. That brings us to this last wall, and it's an important wall. This is the mortality wall. See, this is the last wall, and it's big enough as, a wall, as walls go that even the most optimistic, overachieving person is going to look at it and say, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get over that by myself. See, this, this is a wall that every single one of us, we're going to hit this with all of us because it's the mortality wall. I mean, you might make it through life without hitting those other three walls we talked about, but in case you haven't received notice about this, about this, this uh, human drama and your part in the script, if you read to the end of the script, uh, you're always going to find out. None of us are getting out of this thing alive. I don't want to be a downer on you, but that's, that's where the road goes. See, de the, say it this way, the death rate in the world, every country, every culture is 100%. Everybody is going to reach the end of life. We just don't know when that happens. Now, uh, as, as a pastor, I'm, I'm out and around a lot in uh, going in and out of funeral homes and over a lot of years. And, you know, sometimes I get this weird feeling. I walk in and most of them have a kind of a greeting area. And uh, you walk into the funeral home and I just get this feeling when I walk in, like the staff is, they look at you when you walk in like they're sizing you up. And they say, eh, 6'2", 200 pounds, easy enough. He's a standard fit. It makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable, right? Okay. So here's the thing. 
you're at this wall of mortality. And we're all going to face this wall. I mean, intelligent people have to have enough foresight to ask a question. What's going to happen to me when I hit, out of all these walls, what's going to happen to me when I hit the mortality wall? And, and I mean, what's on the other side of the wall? The Bible says this, it's appointed for people, men, women, everybody. It's appointed for people to die once and after this judgment. Hebrews 9.27. You're not going to be the exception to the mortality wall. You can't avoid a day of reckoning that every one of us is going to stand before the God who made us, created us, and give an account for our lives. You cannot avoid this. But this is, is the good news of Easter. What Jesus did at the cross and in the resurrection, you can prepare for that time. Now, I got a recommendation for you this Easter weekend, and that is prepare for your date with the wall of mortality by getting to know the only one, Jesus the Christ, who blew through that wall and came out the other side alive, resurrected, reigning on high, proving He's the Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Jesus said this, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. He said there's life on the other side of this mortality wall that we're all going to hit the wall, but there's something beyond. But the only one who's been through that wall and resurrected on the other side, Jesus the Christ, you got to get to know Him. Now, I mean no disrespect to any other faith systems, but I have never been able to understand people who say, well, I believe in this religion or this religion or this worldview or that all worldviews are the same. When you look at the, the founders of other religions who've talked about great ideas and did good things in the world, but they died and stayed in the grave. If I'm trusting someone for eternal life, for something beyond this life, I'm putting my faith in the one who was raised from the dead, Jesus Christ. See, Jesus broke through the mortality wall and he proved in being raised from the dead, he is, he is the only Savior. He is God. And he makes resurrection, eternal life, an opportunity for Everybody, if we'll put our faith in Him, believe in Him, surrender our lives to Him. And, and that's the awesome story of Easter. Jesus took my sin, your sin, on His shoulders at the cross. And He paid for our sin. The Bible says all have sinned. you got to own up to that. It's not hard to see. We live in a really broken world and we are broken people in it. I have sinned. We have all sinned. The scripture speaks truth in that. And the wages of sin, what we deserve because of sin, earn because of sin, is death. That means our bodies are going to die, but it also means, apart from Christ, separation from God forever. Jesus took our punishment for sin for us at the cross. He is, the Bible talks about him as our substitute because he never sinned. He's the only one in God's plan who could pay for our sin. And that he would do that is, is such an, we'd sing the song Amazing Grace. That is amazing grace. That he'd give us something like that we do not in any way deserve. And when you see the cross, some people are repelled by it, the violence of it, the ugliness of it. But when I see a cross, it reminds me, God loves me this much. When you see a cross, when you think about Easter, that's how much God loves you. Now, most people, Looking at Easter, celebrating this weekend, most people think, all right, well, if I'm going to get that saving work of Jesus operating in my life, I better get my act together, better try a little harder, try to be a little more religious, tip my hat to God uh, more frequently. We think, we still think, okay, Jesus did all that, but I still have to earn his favor. I still have to do some good deeds, check some religious boxes. I, I have to I have to add on to what Jesus has done. Nothing needs to be added. Listen, the Bible teaches this. For you are saved by grace through faith. Again, it's a gift. This is not from yourselves, Paul writes. It is God's gift, not from works, so that no one can boast. It's not based on what we did. It's based on what He did. 
The reason salvation is secure is because it's what Jesus did, not what we do. If you think you can lose your salvation, it's because you think you did something to earn it. There's nothing we can do to earn it. We only accept the gift offered freely, graciously to us by our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I roll out a sentence like that, and some of you right now may be thinking, well, that's just too good to be true. Listen, Jesus was raised from the dead. He broke through that mortality wall, and the tomb is empty. Raised from the dead, and He offered people who received His gift of redemption, being bought back from that lostness, brokenness, sinfulness, bought back, brought into right relationship to God through the saving faith in Jesus Christ. He gives us this gift called eternal life. Okay. Now, that's where we reside with God forever and ever. And I don't know what your vision of heaven is. I have often said most people's vision of heaven is it's boring, just sitting on a cloud strumming a harp and well, that's what happens in like a Bugs Bunny cartoon, but that is not the way Bible, the Bible describes heaven. Heaven is a place that's exciting, a place of discovery, of continuing growth forever. It's a paradise of God, fellowshipping with others who know Jesus, worshiping God in His presence forever and ever. Oh, it's a glorious place. But here's the thing. Most people I talk to say, yeah, I'd like to go to heaven one of these days. But here's the thing. For a lot of people, we think, yeah, I want to do that, but ah, I'll have plenty of time. In fact, I, I'm going to think about that when I'm just about to the end of the race because honestly, I'm more excited about things in this world right now than I am about God, than I am about what Jesus did for me. So I'm going to push that to the back burners because there are a lot of other things I am much more engaged by. But, but here's the miracle of this thing, and this goes back to our previous walls we talked about. Here's the miracle of this thing. Eternal life is not just when I die, then eternal life kicks in. The Bible doesn't talk about it that way. The Bible says eternal life can start now. Eternal life begins now. That kingdom of God life, it starts now when you give your life to Jesus. Now think about it this way. The quality of life in the kingdom of heaven can begin to take effect in your life right here on earth. See, when Jesus prayed, and many of you are probably familiar with the Lord's Prayer, it has that, that phrasing in it. Jesus said, pray this way, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, he's talking about in our lifetime. That, that kingdom of God kind of life, your kingdom come, your will be done, there, there is a piece of that that will be perfect in heaven, but it starts right now. That's the kingdom of God uh, dream we want to lean into. See, eternal life starts now when you surrender your life to Jesus. Commit your life to following after Him. And what does that look like? Well, you hit the wall, whatever your wall is. You just plastered up against one, maybe one of those walls we talked about, one of those examples I mentioned. You've asked Jesus to come into your life. You've, you've come to that place. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I want to give my life to Jesus. His eternal life starts being operable in your life now because the companionship promised to you in heaven, it starts now. Now, I look at my life. I've been up against some walls before and in several of those different categories. And I'm not saying, well, my life stinks right now, but one of these days in heaven, everything's going to be great. And let me tell you, this is my testimony. A lot of people you know, this could be their testimony. You could feel the work of Jesus Christ in your life. I could feel it. God says to me, Chad, you're at you're a wall. Oh, that's absolutely true. But hey, I'm with you right now. And I want to put this wall in perspective for you, Chad Self. This is not an eternal wall. This is a temporary wall. And this wall that you're facing... It has an expiration date on it. Let's keep that in perspective. See, the biggest problem, it's already been solved. The relationship to God, sin forgiven. Eternity, one of these days, but that kingdom of God life right now. Jesus says, okay, I'll help you deal with uh, this other stuff. 
I'm going to walk with you. Because remember, Jesus is referred to as Emmanuel, God with us. He's very much with us. The Holy Spirit indwells believers. Everything about your life, He is with you. Heaven waiting, there's a whole lot of heaven right here on earth because you're with God and God is with you. Perspective uh, sure helps me. The Apostle Paul wrote uh, some things to the Ephesians, and this is really a, a, a great passage, and I want to share it with you. This is, uh, this is what he says. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. And I think we need a little eyes being enlightened on this so that you may know what is the hope of His calling, what is the wealth of His glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of His power toward us who believe. According to the mighty working of His strength, He ex... Now listen carefully to this. He exercised this power, the same one he just described for believers. He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens. Listen, the Bible there says, this is one of my favorite Easter passages that we pass over, that when we have put our faith in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead as our one and only hope of forgiveness of sin, having a right relationship to God and eternal life in heaven one day, what that passage says is the exact same power that raised Jesus from the dead that first Easter, when you have your faith in Jesus, that same resurrection power is now working in your life, on your behalf, whatever walls you face. Jesus said this. And it's such a simple and applicable teaching. And we can pass by something like this as too simple and miss a powerful truth. Jesus said, ask. He's talking to his disciples. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. He's saying, why wouldn't you think that I'd want to help you? Why wouldn't you ask? Oh, He loves you. He loves you enough to die on the cross for your sins. He's definitely on board with helping you through the things you're going through right now. Some of you are just plastered up against some of these walls today. I know you are, and it hurts. And know we're praying for you, with you. We'll do anything we can to encourage you. But you're worried. You're anxious. But for a lot of people, you'll do just about anything except humble yourself before a God of limitless power and say, God, I'm at the end of me and, and I, need, I need your help and I'm asking. Would you help me? I hope you have the humility to ask him because uh, I'm a self-sufficient person. Some of you are too. And sometimes I can press forward for a long time and it just didn't have to be nearly as hard as it is. Uh, I, I I need to invite him in earlier. I need to recognize my own limitations and God's limitless power. I don't know how many of you have ever been, uh, you've been the person in the hospital. Man, I did that a couple of years ago. And, uh, and the results coming out of that that still walk with me today. And what Jesus is saying in really practical terms is, you know, whatever you face, whatever wall, whatever thing you're going through, I I'm with you. I'm with you at that wall and beyond. You know, don't ever think you're there alone. We need His perspective, His resources. We need His presence in those things of life. But to make all that operable in your life, here's the big thing. we got to get this one right. We have to settle this. The big question. If you're jumping on with us today, you've heard this story probably. Maybe many times you've heard about Jesus. He came into our broken world, died on a cross for our sins, was raised from the dead. Uh, the story of Jesus. But have you ever, are you sure, you've asked the risen Savior to pay for your sins, to be the Lord, the leader, the master, the boss in your life, and to to begin that miracle of eternal life in your, in your life right now as you're going through the rest of your life, walking with Him in relationship, growing every day, to be more like Christ. 
Friends, it is Easter weekend, and I can't think of a better time to clarify this decision than, than now. On this, this Easter, I mean, all of history changed because of the risen Christ, Jesus raised from the dead. So there is one thing I really want to make sure you have squared away before you leave. If you're not absolutely sure that you've asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, if you're not absolutely sure that if you died today, died tomorrow, you'd go right on through that mortality wall and wind up in heaven on the other side on this Easter Sunday, this weekend. How about this? Maybe just to know, to be sure, you would just simply pray, God, I, I have sinned. I'm a sinner and I can't save myself. But I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sin and was raised from the dead. And today, I commit my life to following Jesus. Jesus, save me. Just as simple as that, and everything changes. Sin is forgiven. Holy Spirit comes to reside in you. Christ walking with you. God's power available to you for whatever you face. Listen, let us know if you prayed that prayer today uh, so that we can encourage you in your next steps and pray for you. And for those of you who are facing just big walls, how can we pray for you in those things too? Because I found that while I know God is with me, the, the personal presence, touch, encouragement of other people who are also seeking to follow Jesus, wrapped around me in times of crisis, difficulty, pain, hardship, it sure does pick up my spirit and encourage me to keep on keeping on. And maybe you need some of that kind of encouragement. Let us know. Reach out to us. And on this Easter, God bless you from First Baptist Church out in Texas. Happy Easter, and we continue to celebrate well beyond an Easter Sunday. Jesus, He is risen. Hi, my name is Chris Jones, and I'm the online pastor right here at FBC Allen. Now we know that this worship experience for Easter Sunday probably touched your heart in a way that you wanna take a next step. You wanna make a decision to follow Christ or you've never been in community before and you wanna be a part of an encouraging body that comes alongside you and walks with you in a next step. We wanna be here for you. So reach out to us and let us know that you wanna take that next step. Now at FBC Allen, we know that life can be very lonely it can be very confusing and, and it can be very complicated sometimes. And, and we want to be a body of, of believers, a community that comes together to encourage each and every one of us. We're all in the same place of just really trying to find our purpose, trying to find what matters. And we've discovered that the love of Jesus Christ, that the resurrection story that you just heard, it, it, it makes all the difference. And so what we want to do is, is give you an opportunity to be a part of our community whether it's an online Bible study or it's meeting us right here in, in, in FBC Allen in Allen, Texas. We want you to be a part of a community because we know together, we know that God is going to work through us and that we matter. And we want to encourage you today. We look forward to hearing from you this week and we pray that you have a great rest of the week.